Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday after Epiphany. As you join us online, I hope that you'll say that you're here, participate in the liturgy throughout worship, and share your prayer concerns that they may be shared in community. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of the prelude. Our music today is provided by Steve White. Please join me for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Fish tales are often about the one that got away, but our first reading today is about the one that didn't. More than a big fish tale, it's part of the story about the prophet Jonah being gobbled up by a big whale or a big fish. We know that Jonah was a prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel under King Jeroboam II. And he lived between 786 and 746 BCE. But we aren't sure about when this book was written or even who wrote it. Nor are we really expected to believe that a human survived three days living inside a marine mammal's stomach or being regurgitated out onto the shore. Jonah's story is one of the places in scripture where we can say it may not have happened quite this way, but it is true. Our text today begins, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. The first time is the part of the story you may remember from children's Bible stories and songs. Basically, God sent Jonah to speak to the people in a place called Nineveh. The ruins of that city are in modern northern Iraq. And what we know now, as we read this story, is that Nineveh later became the capital of the Assyrian Empire, who were enemies of Israel and known for their violence. God asked Jonah to go to them and to tell them to repent, to turn back toward God and leave behind the evil and wickedness they were doing. But instead of following God's direction, Jonah flees in the opposite direction, 
fleeing from Nineveh, and more importantly, fleeing from God's presence. He doesn't get very far, though. And when the boat he is on is swamped by heavy seas, he tells the crew to throw him overboard so that they will be saved. And that's when Jonah winds up in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Our reading picks up after the whale had spat him out on, upon the shore. And this time, when God speaks, Jonah listens and follows God's direction. He undertakes the journey to Nineveh, a city the author tells us is three days walk across. The three days are a common biblical unit and mirror the three days Jonah spent in the belly of the whale. Hebrew scholar Robert Alter suggests the city's dimensions also exaggerate the enormity of the task before Jonah explaining that clocking roughly three miles an hour, a walker could cover as much as 30 miles a day. A city 90 miles across would be considerably larger than even contemporary Los Angeles. And no actual city in the ancient Near East could have been anywhere near that big. But Jonah only spends one day in the city before the people of Nineveh and the king himself believed what he was saying and repented, fasting and putting on sackcloth. In the verses that follow our reading, the author's flair for exaggeration is on display again, as we hear how the king extends the fasting and sackcloth to not only the citizens of Nineveh, large and small, but also to their cattle and to their sheep. The bizarre but humorous image of livestock clothed in coarse fabric and bellowing to God helps us appreciate the urgency and the totality of the people's desire to repent and return to God. Then the text says, when God saw what they had done, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The, the people turned back from their evil way. And God changed God's mind or relented from the evil that he said to do to them. Well done, Jonah, good and faithful servant. Right? Except Jonah isn't content or relieved. He is angry. He is angry that God has shown God's characteristic mercy and love to God's people. And when he sees it happen, he yells at God. And then Jonah leaves the city and sulks. But God talks to Jonah about his disappointment and his anger and his desire for vengeance. And then overlooking the city and its inhabitants, God reminds Jonah that God is God of all the people in the world. Not only the Israelites, but also the Ninevites. Not only the pious and the obedient, but also the recalcitrant. Jonah is angry because he knew, he knew the people in Nineveh were violent and wicked. And just as he suspected God would, God extended mercy and loving kindness to those people, those people who defied God, those people who fill in the blank, the people you don't agree with, 
the people you find difficult, the people whose behaviors or appearances unsettle you. The same God who gave Jonah a second chance, the same God who gave the Ninevites a second chance, loves those people. And that same God also loves you with the same abounding and steadfast love and compassion that we hear in this story. It's true. And isn't that good news to share with the world? Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church the world, and all the people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that it God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, 
for the outcast and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them, especially those we name aloud now or silently in our hearts. Pray for the pastor, Tommy Leinberger. For Grant Adcock, Fran Hawk, Kathy Backoff, Martha Bean, Dan Birch, Carolyn Blitz, Christine Bridges, Adam Bridges and Brittany Smith, Cody Bryant, Mike Callahan, Chris Carmen, Martha Cash, Edna Cooper, the Davenport family, Charles and Mary Degree, Sahar Degree, Gloria Dellinger, Charles Duvall, Barbara Duvall, Tim Farmer, Avon Fields, Ann Fitzsimmons, Mike Green, Marky and Carl Greenwald, Jeff Holksvig, Richard Hollifield, Michael Hunsinger, Joe Hutchinson, Patty Jenkins, Kay Johnson, Steve Jolly, Mark Kent, Rachel Kidwell, Brian Legrand, Jim Lilly, Sonia and Gerald Lovelace, Brenda Lowry, Pam Lucas, Eva McCombs, Janice McGovern, Sherry Dawn Mack, Maribeth Mees, Wanda Mullinax, Teresa Olson, Bob Patzer, Linda Patzer, Gerard Peruzzi, Margaret Peruzzi, Liz and Ron Del Pagetto, Bonnie Reedy, Beth Rhine, Shannon Sellers, Jean Tesnia, Pam Unger, Edith Walker, David Waldrop, Molly and Daryl Waterstrat, Alfie Welch, Christopher Williver, Mary Ann Woolley, Dean Davis, Lynn Washburn, Dot Paul, Bob Bryant, William Coyne, Jim Wilson, Bobby Johnson, Gerald Washburn, Ray Valentine, Lucinda Wallen, Lisa Upton, Sandy Harmon, Emma Auk, Brooke Buchanan, Samantha Hoffman, Jacob Stone, Catherine May Lilly, and the staff and leaders of Hospice Cleveland County and those they serve. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that usually meet here on the church property when they're able, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share the peace across chat and comments and video. As we move into this time of offering, I first give thanks to all of you who have continued your gifts and tithes and offerings to the ministry and mission of Ascension Lutheran Church. 
that we've been able to remain a pres the presence of Christ in our community. Thank you. If you'd like to make a gift today, you can do that using the Give Plus app or the website. You can mail a gift into the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 266 here in Shelby, 28151. Or you can give by texting the amount you wish to give. And that number is 844-906-2283. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever gathered into, the, into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When our congregation gathered for Holy Communion with all the saints from every time and place, we heard again the story of God's mighty acts and the love shown us in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The holy meal of the Lord's Supper was shared. Now we share this word of life and this bread and cup of blessing that we may share in these same gifts and be strengthened by the Christian community, even though we gather separately for a time. Gathered at the Lord's table, our congregation remembered with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. This bread and cup shared in our community of faith are here given for you. I invite you to receive the elements you have at home and know that these are the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim 
your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.